Well, I guess I'm as ready to go as I'm ever going to be. <laughs> it all began when I was on a tour of Greece, and I learned that there was going to be a conference in Athens the following month about a 2,000-year-old computer. I was immediately captivated and decided I must attend that conference. My entire professional career was devoted to working with computers. Here is a test of an intercontinental ballistic missile defense system on Kwajalein Island. I was responsible for two of the computers that were involved in intercepting the incoming warhead. And um, I also wrote a 20-page article about computers in the journal Annals of the History of Computers. So computers were my life. And here is a 2,000-year-old computer that I never heard of. I must attend that conference. At the conference, I learned that in 1900, some Greek sponge divers found a shipwreck off the Greek island of Antikythera. They discovered hundreds of marble and bronze statues of people and horses and jars of wine and many other artifacts. One of the items they found was a clump of bronze gears, of which this is the largest fragment. The ship had sunk about 60 BC, 1,500 years before the first gears appeared in Europe. These fragments were named the Antikythera Mechanism. From time to time, other groups explored the area around the sunken ship and collected more objects. Among others, Jacques Cousteau, on two different occasions, explored the area. Even today, people are searching for sight. Now here are the 82 fragments of the Antikythera mechanism that have been found. Uh, the largest is about five inches in diameter. And as you can see, the smallest are very small. Is it obvious to you what these are pieces of? <laughs> and um, from the time, from the moment that they found the first fragment of the device, Researchers have been studying them and trying to understand the function of the device. Professor Price at Yale constructed a model showing that it was a computer. And now back to the conference. Here is a researcher of the mechanism, Michael Wright, describing his model. In the process of building the model, he was able to correct some of Professor Price's errors. And here, Michael made a model of the mechanism in his garage using only the tools available to the Greeks at that time. The pointers show the position of the sun and moon and maybe the five known planets for any selected day. And here is the backside of Michael's model. Here you see two dials. The upper dial is a special kind of calendar. The lower dial is an eclipse predictor. It gives the month, day, and time of day for eclipses of both the sun and the moon. Now, by chance, I sat next to Michael's wife, and as a result, became good friends with them both. Here's a picture of her at the conference, and I'd like you to notice the pin on her vest. It was a small model of the largest fragment. And more, as more was learned about the mechanism, improved models of the device could be made. Note the presence of the engraved text on this replica and many pointers. The text is in ancient Greek. And here is what I think the device really looked like. Notice the engraved text on the metal plate on the door. It is the world's first instruction manual <laughs> written in ancient Greek. And of course, most of us think that all instruction man manuals are written in ancient Greek. <laughs>
I mentioned earlier that there were many statues and other artifacts found at the site. Many are displayed at the National Museum in Athens. Here's one of my favorites. It is titled, The Antichisera Youth, and is made of bronze. I took a number of pictures in the courtyard of the museum. Among my favorites is this one. It is called The Wrestler. Notice how extremely well preserved it is due to being buried in the sea bottom sediments. And now, look at this. And as you can see, the side of the boy was uncovered and suffered the consequences of being exposed to the corrosive power of the seawater and various sea organisms. Another favorite in the courtyard. This man has been identified as the mythical king of Ithia, Odysseus. It represents a moment when he had just escaped from a one-eyed giant and was looking back to see if he was being followed. This bronze is the head of a statue called the philosopher. I call your attention to the reflection of the face of the conference photographer at the bottom left. He was following me around as I looked at the exhibit. To the best of my knowledge, there is only one anti kissera mechanism presently on display in the Western Hemisphere. And here is Barbara, co-founder of the American Computer and Robotic Museum, looking at it here in Bozeman, Montana. Yeah.